Namaste Galactic family and welcome back to the channel. Come on into this dimension. Today I have two very special guests on the show to talk about a very mysterious and relevant and recent happening that seems to be going on worldwide in all kinds of different animal species, but most recently it's been happening in the sheep, which have been acting a bit different. So whenever animals act strange, it does seem to capture our attention. So some of you may have heard of this already, the sheep circling that went viral from China. So I just wanted to thank you so much for being here today. We have Chris Anatra from Quantum Businessman on YouTube and Sean Bond from Psionic League on YouTube as well. So I just want to say thank you both gentlemen for being here today. How are you guys doing? I'm doing really well, and it's it's great to be with you again, Indy. Um, the last time we got together was back on April 20th when we had another fun show, our 420 show. So I'm I'm sure everyone that watches this one is going to find it interesting, fascinating, and fun. So I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. I'm also uh, well today. Uh, this is a fun topic. Uh, looking to, forward to see what these sheep are doing. From your guys' perspective, and we piece the puzzle together, find out what's going on. Yeah, definitely. So, and just like Chris just mentioned, last time that we all got together uh, was a lot of fun. We actually covered an untouched topic, which was the galactic origins of cannabis. Um, so, I'll just actually do a quick screen share. I really suggest everyone. Um, especially if you're new to my channel, to go back and check out this video that we did on the galactic origins of cannabis. It was a 420 special, and we really dived in, and we really touched on so many topics, but I think the main exciting thing that we talked about was brought this new perspective of where cannabis came from on a galactic level, and that was a really fun show, you guys. How how What was your feedback after doing that show? Did a lot of people kind of respond to that? We're kind of interested on those galactic origins of cannabis. I'm just going to say that I can't believe how much my hair has grown since <laughs> since that show. But yeah, a lot of people like um, had their own stories. Like um, we put this also on our on our channel as well on the Quanta Business Pan. I think Sean put it on his as well. And yeah, got a lot of good feedback and heard a lot of people's stories. So it was it was definitely very informative for everyone. Yeah, a lot of stoner demographics, so it's good uh, again that and bring them more in touch with spirit as they tap into the those higher dimensions and wisdom and intuition and visions, so they can uh, talk with the ganja uh, goddess and uh, the angels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. I think it's one main question that a lot of people really have too is you know, how do I approach ganja? How do I approach marijuana and psychedelics and plant medicine with being spiritual? So it was really good to, I think, to address those topics and kind of give people a perspective of where we come from when it comes to all of that. So definitely check it out, you guys. Links will be down in the description so you can go back and watch that. And so, yeah, let's get into this sheep circling. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I could start with a little bit of like history, like what's been going on with this. So it started on, I've got some notes here. It started on November 4th in China, in the inner, <clears throat> excuse me, inner Mongolia section in a town called Baotou, B-A-O-T-O-U. Now, what's really interesting about this town of Baotou is that the Great Wall of China actually runs through that town, runs through that area. It's called the Gaiang section, which is one of the oldest parts. It's 2,500 years old, that section of the Great Wall. So I thought that was really interesting. And also, too, so where the sheep started circling was in pen number 13 of 34 pens. So you know, numbers mean something. So it was pen number 13 where they started circling and the sheep are circling in a clockwise manner. 
So not counterclockwise, but clockwise. And I think that's probably important for us to talk about too. But that gives everyone a little bit of insight about what's been going on. They've been circ they circle for at least 12 days, I think maybe even 14 days. I think by now they've stopped cir circling because probably the farmers were like, okay, it's time for some wool <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever they need to do with the farm. But yeah, it was a, definitely a phenomena that caught a lot of worldwide attention. Definitely. So I'm going to actually screen share really quick so we can just show this video for everybody watching today what this looked like. Okay, so this is the animals displaying the odd behavior walking in the circles. What does this mean? At Night God 333. Really, you can find these videos all over YouTube on multiple different channels. This completely went viral. Um, and one thing that we discussed coming before we jumped on together today was how this is, it seems to be like there's a lot of different types of videos that are coming up with different animals doing this circling behavior. So what do you guys think that this actually means on a deeper level? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I'll start first by saying, so when this video of the sheep circling first surfaced, you know, scientists were trying to answer and figure out like, what is it? Is there a scientific reason for it? And the first thing that they came out with was that they thought it was a brain disease called listeriosis, which can cause circling in animals, not really circling in herds, like a, an animal would circle like a dog chasing its tail. But they later ruled that out because if an animal has that disease, they're usually, they usually die within 24 to 48 hours. So because this was going on for days and days and days, they figured that couldn't be part of it. And there are all different types of theories that continue to come out. The latest theory that came out was that the sheep are bored. So, so they all started like circling each other because they didn't know what to do. You know, it's being pen, you know, being penned up all day is kind of a boring thing. So that's the that's the latest theory that science has about what was happening with this. And of course, like you can start to like read into it and other people have been saying, could this be related to the earth's changing magnetic field? Could it be related to the pole shift? Could it be related to all this extra solar and cosmic radiation that's coming in? So we're going to talk about th these and some of the other things that it might be, including I, I got some information from the Akashic records about what it might be as well. So Sean, what's what's your input on this so far? A uh, lot. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, going into like all the possibilities, because I don't like um, just saying oh, what it is. I like presenting the options and I'm full of tune in. Uh, you know, <laughs> could it be a negative thing or a good thing? Like I'm leaning to more towards good thing, but like, you know. Like I've heard all a lot of theories on like, oh, what could be happening in 2022 that's different than other things. And like, what's what, what you know, what have these sheep gone through? These poor sheep. Um, no. Uh, or is there a 5G involved or like, you know, different types of frequencies? Are they a warning of something like in the future? A lot of people are like, oh, the rapture, um, you know, all the animal things uh, coming into flocks and all that, like in the Bible. Um, uh, and then, uh, you brought up a video before, uh, of like people going around a circle, like in Mecca. Um, so whether, you know, the, I'm reading there's conscious, um, action behind this, that's influencing it. But even if there wasn't like, what's the effect of things moving around in a circle off, um, over and over again, well, in magic, uh, as you walk in a circle in a consecrated magic circle is the more you charge it up uh, every time you do a rotation it amplifies it um, in octaves and uh, with more people or consciousness even more so. Uh, so this very activity creates chakras on the earth uh, that are birthing a powerful multidimensional being. So a lot of times in the nests of animals or, or in ant hills or bird nests or trees or like squirrels or, or whatever there'll be a first or or higher octave chakra that's formed out of that that like goes um 
from the center of the earth upwards in a connection of heart space. And then it can form a energetic chakra associated with like the seven main chakras in concept and then going deeper into a uh, type of a mission and thing it's good at based on who the spirit involved that made it and then is a guardian over it in spirit from then f that time onward. Uh, so just doing uh, these, you know, consecrating magic circles by rotating over and over again. Um, the w Wicca religion likes to do clockwise but I've also seen good things with counterclockwise. So it depends on the intention. And also there's uh, spirals that uh, go into intention, such as um, four major spirals that have to do with uh, either circulating inward or going outward, um, um, uh, like uh, going outward from the center or going outward. Uh, so it's like sealing, unsealing, banishing, and... Um, Binding uh, is the uh, see if there's any. Um, there, there's probably more in aspects of that technology, of course, because uh, it and you don't have to be as like, oh no, if you if you spin this way, it can only be this. It more so with intention, but like some rotations are better at amplifying other intentions. So is yeah. that, and then. Uh, this charges up energy we're like batteries we're like uh uh we have all uh, all animals have dantian and they charge up uh density of light and energy and so just doing this in a collective and they they sync up uh it can do a lot for the land um in a good way it could even be spurred upon by the land like the magnetic fields uh and how they affect uh like pigeons and stuff and how they always know which way to go uh, there could be something powerful in that spot, that place of power that they're following, that they're sensitive to, that they're reacting to. Um, th that being said, and you you guys can like comment. I got like a lot more to comment into this, so feel free to continue, and then I'll I'll come come back to me. It definitely brings up a lot for me, just just intuitively looking at this, like I kind of mentioned that I think anything again with animals doing something we're going to start looking deeper into it we're going to start going into the deeper meanings and what what does this mean because this is something that went viral right so everyone now is looking at this experts are looking at this you know there's so much speculation about what this truly and really means and I had brought up earlier the movie Arrival um, talking about the aliens that came in the spaceships and they came to teach humanity a new language of peace and they were drawing these circles they were in every single part of their language actually was some form of a circle with some other different design in it so I think anything regarding a circle is somewhat of a message of unity of wholeness of you know, coming back to the meaning of what a concentric circle means in the first place, which often concentric circles mean eternal life or the connection to the eternal life or the eternal spiral, the golden spiral, the golden ratio, all of these things. So, um, and I, and just like I mentioned before, they're, they're moving in a clockwise motion. So clockwise usually means life. Clockwise usually means <clears throat> acceleration and electric energy and also masculine energy as well um sean was just going into the meanings of you know a clockwise motion spiral versus an anti-clockwise spiral and what that means and yes i do think that there is a lot of confusion in that as to well if we're using a clockwise motion this is good or if we're using anti-clockwise it's bad or vice versa and again i think it's up to speculation perspective and intention with that energy um, because there's a lot of attunements that I've personally done just to clear my energy field where we're focusing on both spin sets because it's attuning to um, the, the positive and the negative frequency in the body, which is 
um, electric energy and magnetic energy. So um, again, like you said, going back to intention, but oftentimes in some certain teachings and certain perceptions, the anti-clockwise spin does mean that it's going in a reversal motion or it is going anti-clockwise. If you look at the Kaaba that we were just looking at not too long ago, I had it up on one of these pictures here, but I do believe that they are spinning in... Um, I don't know where I have the Kaaba. I can just pull up a new thing. But um, I do believe they're going in an a anti-clockwise spin when they're doing this. Um, and I've, re I've remote viewed the Kaaba before. And it was, it was as if that this is connected to something more nefarious because of what the cube represents. So there is definitely a lot of polarity that's coming up with this in it's it's really bringing up the the um the universal laws of of polarity and the light and dark that i think we're facing as humanity when trying to overcome all of these challenging times um because the cube itself is connected to saturn right so we have this anti-clockwise spin we have the saturnian connection and we have thousands of these muslims that are rotating in that direction daily you know millions of muslims so they're definitely drawing energy down into the earth and funneling it into some form of planetary mechanics that's utilizing that energy i had talked about the black tesseract cube architecture that's inside of the earth um so is this is this um representative of that given that the sheep have rectangular pupils you know is this all connected to this i i know christopher you talked about the rectangular pupils of the sheep yeah what's really interesting too is that well for me this i consider that this is a personal mandela effect but the planet saturn has a hexagon at its north pole now to me i i had never I, I i thought i saw in a lot of pictures of the planet saturn but i never i never noticed the hexagon so what's interesting is that when you take a a cube and you position it a 3d cube in a certain position it could form a hexagon so it could actually it's called a, a rusinated tesseract and by the way you did a really good you put out some really good content about cubes and tesseracts and um, all that. So I just want to commend you on, on that work, Indigo, because that was very, very consciousness expanding what you were talking about. So yeah, is there is there a connection between Saturn, this cube of Mecca, the rectangular square shaped eyes, pupils that sheep have, and other herding animals or animals, prey animals is what they're called. Yeah. So to me, it's like when I see pictures like this that you have, it's almost like another reality because I just don't remember seeing like these these rectangular square shapes in animals before you know for myself personally so I think there's a lot there's a lot you can read into this as well this this aspect of it no definitely that was something I was unaware of until this whole sheep circling thing even came up I didn't even know that until you brought this to my attention I'm like wow this is insane they have square peoples but they're not the only animal that does apparently goats do as well um I horses? Think hor horses octopus yeah you, you could go online there's, there's literally like a whole list of animals that have these rectangular square shaped pu pupils i was looking a little bit more into that and it said that their pupils are like this so that way they have panoramic vision to the ground and so that way they can detect potential predators better so they have a 360 degree range of a panoramic vision which i just thought was kind of interesting but yeah i mean i think pupils are very indicative of the type of galactic energy frequency and embodiment of the soul body that that spirit that that animal carries i mean if you look of um reptiles right and lizards and and things like this like they have and, and felines they have the uh, silver coined uh, vertical uh, pupil. And so, you know, that's definitely very serpent. It's very draconic. Um, so I've always associated those animals to carry 
that galactic energy. So, you know, should we be looking at these land animals with these rectangular people thinking, well, they're, they're an embodiment of Saturnian energy? What do you guys think of um, fawns and satyr? Fawns and like satyr. Uh, sheep and goat people. Oh. Well, isn't Baphomet a goat? <laughs> um, as far as I know, Baphomet is a composite being made out of multiple deities that taken together to make a new deity for Satanists and uh, means that worship that. And there's like origins going back to it with a faction of the Knight Templar that was discovered to be worshiping them that was held in custody when you know i <laughs> think they're uh the church was clearing out um other sects but there there's a big deep cult into this being um so it's like you know it, it will appear to people but it's it's mo uh, like parts and shadow from multiple beings put together such as pan um yeah and some other uh deities uh, but yeah, so yeah I, go ahead there's definitely a lot of connections i mean we we between all three of us i think we could connect this across so much space time um with what it what it's connected to i mean really looking at what this is happening with this circling it's almost as if though a lot of people are saying it's biblical um just given what sheeps um do ultimately mean that you know because in the bible sheeps are the followers are, of christ it, it seems biblical with that there was 12 days right 12 days that they're circling 12 disciples yes. and even 13 as well it's also a very magical number with the 13th pen so it's almost as if, you know, were the sheeps following some voice of God to create this perfect clockwise circle to send some sort of message uh, to humanity to awaken us more in this time? You know, it's kind of I think that was actually my first thought when I when I looked at this. Yeah. And even in the Bible, it says that you can find uh, the truth in nature, the scriptures that kind of reveal that. And so when you think about sheep too, usually sheep, well, sheep will have a shepherd and the shepherd directs them where to go. So when sheep are circling, you know, they're not really sure where to go. And could that also be a representation of the times that we're living in now where people are getting like really confused? They don't know who to trust. Like, I think more and more people are not trusting the news media. They're not trusting their government. They're not trusting science and big pharmacy to tell them what to do and so forth. In fact, I just saw this poll that was out on Twitter um, by this actor. His name is James Wood. And he put out this poll that said that it, it was only for people that had the, the jabber. And basically what it was is he asked if knowing what you know now, would you still have gotten it? And almost 90 percent of people said no. So a lot of people are like changing their minds and they're confused and they don't know who to follow. So this could also be something you could read into what's happening because times are really changing. Like they are really accelerating now, especially as we head into the end of this year. So yeah, there, there's, yeah different parts of that. Yeah. Good point. I definitely agree with that. You know, like you said, with not trusting Willy Wonka and Big Farm and all of these things, farming humans, I think I looked into something earlier that said the FDA was looking to ban things like garlic, lemon, <laughs> lemon you know, like these real disease, antioxidant, immunity boosting vegetables, you know, they want to actually start banning things like this. You know, if that's not some clear indicator that we're going in this, <laughs> that the agendas of these corporations, these Baphomet ran corporations, Saturnian ran corporations, I'll just come out and say it like that, you know, that there's just something really wrong with the way things are, especially with, you know, this hijacking of, of our food. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, these are all signs, I think, of of rev revelational times where it's, it's definitely time to 
wake up. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. Yeah, Chris. Oh, yes. um, and uh, Indigo, did have you seen that show, The Magicians? I have. Mm -mm, I haven't. What's it about? Right. Uh, okay, so it has this uh, uh, cast of characters, but here's like a um, link to one of the deities in that show. Uh, it goes into kind of like a Narnia realm of another a realm that they go to that's uh, sped up in time and magical and stuff. And the cre two creators of it are uh, these fawn uh, gods, uh, Ember and Umber. And it's like going into the concept of them creating a whole world and then being chaos and order and uh, kind of being soft closed in that. So, you know, whether people, the, the fawn and Seder myth mythos goes back farther than people really know about um, Greek, Celtic, Gaelic, um, and even to Atlantis. I, I, you know, <laughs> I track them back as a real species, but, uh, and then, so a lot of them are extra dimensional and then uh, other realmly, and then can use sheep as a unentangled observer technology to uh, see what's going on in the world and they can influence things. So I also went into tracking back what is influencing these sheep uh, in this higher mind. And I'm sure Chris also has some things to bring up to that too. Yeah. Do you, do you want, do you want to go first, Sean? I can. Um, and are you able to put some of those other videos I uh, put up while we're talking? Uh, let's see. And then, um, yeah. So some, uh, this I one, want, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever else you got you know and, and some of them have been you know disproven and all that and so i'd ask everyone before they spread more of this to have time stamps and where it is and then uh if it's been uh you know seen as true and like what we've been talking about depending on how long it lasts and if it if it's not breaking up broken up um uh, this is an easy way to get viral so that it shouldn't really break it up unless some authorities come in is annoying uh it, they don't seem to be ki doing killing themselves like just uh spinning around in circles till they die they seem to be like you know uh taking shifts like a protest would uh and cycling out uh so with this though the sheep one in china i was reading mostly into that one uh there's a bunch of different aspects to it uh it seems to pre-tell like something amazing going on on the planet, uh, which uh, goes along with the consciousness of Earth herself being more whole than she has been in a while since the fall of Atlantis. Uh, since, you know, at that point, she kind of went into a coma for a bit, and now she's kind of like groggy and waking up and all that, and putting taking back more of her stuff and authority and uh, empowering things and then utilizing this strategy chess move of optimization of time with all the cells of her body, which be like us and all the consciousness as caretakers. It seems to be tell something that I'm translating as the great energy accumulation, uh, which seems to be a, a type of technology that planets can well really anyone uh, fractaling up and down it's like a qigong technique of um charging up or um gathering energy and accumulating it compressing it increasing your energy density and uh kind of pearl uh turning into a pearl in qigong but uh let's do this on the planet let's say on the planetary level where it's accumulating a large amount of energy and then is going to do something with the you know amount of energy it's built up at, after it's done so uh what that can be used for it seems to be camouflaging it but it's you know based on its history of what it's done in the past uh things like amplifying the people's awareness their consciousness awakening them upgrading evolution Ma making it so there's more capabilities getting rid of problems great growth and evolution and then resolving a whole bunch of things all at once with a whole bunch of energy uh i could say it's something around that type of thing then um 
So there'll be some type of explosive in a good way, not in any negative, but like um, uh, mission of that energy after the energy accumulation is done. Uh, I also read a whole bunch of famous um, or popularity energy with this, which goes into how easily it went viral, uh, which goes into there's not just normal consciousness influencing this. Um, and Chris and me kind of read into this at this uh, around the same time with who are the beings doing this? Uh, I read um, there's a, like a Chinese there's a strategy going on. Uh, it seems to be like big consciousness having to do with sheep uh, influence and management. So some type of sheep gods, but also uh, something to do with Japan, where there seems to be a little bit of a battle between the the gods of Japan and the dark forces um, dominating the Chinese people in China. Uh, and they're uh, for a while, I've been tracking back that China has these dark forces and sorcerers that are throwing negative energy and stealing people's stuff and dominating and draining energy from other nations surrounding it. Uh, Japan's been kind of doing a lot of major energy <laughs> activations to itself and growing and getting stronger, interestingly. So there seems to be a counter going on to China from the Japanese gods, especially Izanami and Izunagi, the two, one of the two of the main creator gods, um, as well as the Japanese uh, consciousness of the islands chain, the main consciousness itself. Um, so and and like it being at the border of where the Chinese uh, the the Great Wall is and like with the history of the Great Wall and a lot of people being sacrificed and putting into the wall and like this big amount of psychic defense and stuff from the Mongolians to prevent you know their magic from breaching. Uh, there uh, might be a strategy with breaching the great spiritual wall of china uh with this uh it seems to be breaking through the matrix aspect of china uh the negative matrix it seems to be in uh, promoting freedom of enslavement so it's also funneling and freeing people and spirits mostly trapped in china and if you've seen a bunch of the footage which i also put up in the chat if you can bring those up that uh, China's going through a revolution currently uh, with a large amount of protest that's spurring up that, uh, you know, the algorithms are censoring like quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it's in the chat. It should be. Yeah, I have to just go back to it. Was it the last one that you sent me? I put it under Chinese protests. Uh, it's like a few up uh, after Saturn's cube. The, the first to under China protests, which I can also bring up if I'm in trouble. Okay. Things are really intensifying in China, especially lately. Like it's always been crazy, but thing like people are really revolting and protesting. Wow. Yeah, they're mostly protesting the lockdowns and restrictions, the zero covid policy and quarantine quarantine people in their houses and sometimes i'm starving uh yeah there's there's a lot of messed up stuff going on with that and the social credit score and so all these people are rising up now so it's it's pretty interesting to see uh the timing with this all so i'm sure there's some energetic uh freeing of the collective consciousness of china too it doesn't seem to be uh, Japan doesn't seem to be doing anything super negative to China or the people, but is more so opposed to the thing that's been attacking it. And so it's breaching that there's a breach in that fortress. Um, I know you have some stuff to go on this, Chris. 
Yeah. So um, thank you for all that, Sean. So, so just to add to what you've been saying. So like when I was looking into it too, with the Akashic records, like the first thing I was getting was the term like mind transfer. <clears throat> so what's going on with this sheep? So something to do with a mind transfer. So basically something was affecting their brains to actually start circling, like to cause them some kind of an influence. And I was getting also, it was related to Japan and it was related to those two creator gods, um, Inzangi and Inzami. I don't know much about them, but I know they're very important in the Japanese mythos. And I thought, like you were saying, what would be key to all this is if the sheep were actually opening a magic portal to invoke the spirits of these gods to come in from a higher dimension, it would really be the best thing if it was within the Great Wall of China. So when I found out that that town was actually, that's where the Great Wall of China was going through. It kind of, it, now, I don't know exactly where the sheep pens are related to the Great Wall, but it would add more weight to it if that pen is actually located you know, within the Chinese side of the Great Wall of China. And like you were saying, with all the sacrifices that they did for the Great Wall, uh, the bodies that are put into the Great Wall, if all that has um, an effect on what's happening and is maybe helping to amp up the situation and what's going on with the sheep. And the other thing that I was getting is, so I was looking into the Akashic records and, and wanting to, to find out like, okay, why, what's the outcome? And I was getting a few things. The first thing is called change transition, which makes sense because it seems like China's going through a beginning, like a, a really big change transition. They, they want the dictator um, of China to step down. That's what a lot of these protests are about lately. And also awakening energy. So these Japanese gods bringing in awakening energy into China. And then I was also reading, into, I didn't go into all the specifics, but things related to the heart and things related to the throat. So almost like the, vo the people having a voice now. So all these things, when you look at it from another angle, like adds more interesting things. Like, could this be just more things for us to consider as, as possibilities? Can you bring the the video up of the guy levitating by the way so that people kind of know what the power of magic circle could be that it can be many different directions it mostly has to do with intention where the conscious what's the consciousness trying to do in manifestation or get things done as well as um what their souls and their dna tech is good at so and sheep are <laughs> they're versatile so there's quite a lot that can be done so here's a uh, African shaman uh, that is, and you can go to my channel, Sonic League, uh, goes into this guy levitating after, you know, consecrating the circle for a while and circling around it and then lighting a fire. And then being seen levitating uh, from multiple angles uh, through the camera. So, yeah, there, there's, there's quite a bit to magic circles and what they can do. Yeah. Uh, as, as a representation of the micro and the macro, uh, our bodies, the universe as a whole, and uh, being protected in it, having an intention of amplification, in invocation, evocation, uh, cro uh, the crossroads between uh, the, the material world and the spirit world. Uh, there's many powerful things that can happen through it, uh, both positive and negative and and light and dark and all, all the layers in between tension depending on where you're getting that energy from and if you source from yourself or uh in energy your you know divine um uh connection within the the source you know source of everything prime creator galaxy universe earth or external forces that aren't aren't always going to be in your benefit so be careful just something that came to me off the top of my head while you were pointing out the importance of the circle and then chris you were talking about japan it had me thinking about particle accelerators um so i've done a bunch of deep dives on cern particle accelerators are, are also moving 
either in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise circular motion. There's more than one particle accelerator on the earth. There's multiple. Um, I wonder sometimes if, you know, this, this sheep circling could be something that they're picking up on the degradation of the electro geoelectromagnetic field and could be mimicking the circling due to the running of the particle accelerators, potentially something like that. I know that there's one in Japan and it's called Keck. Um, and so, you know, particle accelerators definitely have a lot to do with human consciousness and the way that we're responding to um, gravity and electromagnetic fields. And so, um, you know, there, there's one here in uh, Tsukuba, Ibaraki, Japan. But uh, yeah, so I mean, these particle accelerators could have, you know, effects on the animals the same way and, and um, could have something to do with it being being that it is in Japan. Um, it's interesting. It's called Kek. Uh, that's an Egyptian frog god. And that I recently saw that was brought up with a meme, Peppy the frog. And <laughs> there's like a whole rabbit hole with that. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, but, there definitely yeah. is. <laughs> I think Ke Keku is the god of destruction in Egyptian mythology. Like he is the, the dark one that you don't want to mess with type of thing. Besides, yeah, there's a bunch of dark ones, you know, like, Apep or uh, Apophis. Yeah. yeah, and I think um, toads, I know toads have um, square pupils, rectangular pupils. I wonder if frogs have the rectangular pupils too. That would be interesting to look up. And yes. I agree with what you're saying about the connection with these um, large hadron colliders, these cyclotrons. You know, are they technological magic circles? You know, can they be used to, to summon and open portals? I believe that they can. So I think there's definitely a connection. Also, too, with all the mining that we do of rare earth minerals like lithium, for example, a lot of lithium deposits are in China. And could all of these rare earth minerals that we're extracting from the earth also be playing a part in the changing of earth's magnetic field and maybe accelerating the changes even more? So all these different things play into this fabric, this tapestry of what's what's going on here with these sheep. Yes, ab absolutely. It just got me thinking about amnesic technologies. You know, some of my research has taken me into that these hadron collider particle accelerators have been around since the Egyptian Sumerian invasion and that these um, could have been experimental and intentional to actually wipe the memory of humanity and that things like uh, particle accelerators, Area 49, Area 51, Area 52, Area 58, there's there's all kinds of uh, taking this technology to Mars even and have outpost centers for this research on other planets that we might be recycling old timelines of planetary destruction um, back into the collective field and it's getting wiped up into that amnesic technology for us to feel and represent the signs and the symptoms of these things but have no recollection of these things ever happening whatsoever and so yeah it's it's just amazing to me how much this sheep circling is really expanding the field right now and allowing us to bring so many concepts in um so, I mean, that that goes to show you what it's really actually doing on a collective level. Something so simple as sheep circling are really opening up some really big conversations. Can you bring up the video I just sent last? Uh, Chris used this in a scene. It's from that the show Good Omens. That's the guy uh, that made a highway going around. So, like, this used in the negative tension. If you can play it with sound, it's funny. Yeah, hang on. Didn't move my thing out of the way. I can't hear it. Um being caused by problems on the M25, the freeway that's do you hear it on your end? Um I my sound's a little low. M25 back in the nineteen seventies. 
Sir. Now we can hear it. Sorry. It's getting louder. It's getting louder. Keep going. It's still, it's still hard to hear. I have it turned all the way up on my end, so I'm not sure I can get it much louder. Interesting. Okay, so uh, this guy made a big, he said he made it so that he changed the freeway design around London uh, so that he turned in a giant magic circle and made it so that people are stuck in traffic accumulating negative energy from being frustrated in traffic uh and then <laughs> puts all that energy towards uh demons uh so <laughs> they're an evil intention um so how many of our circular freeways are like giant magic circles like a slow churning uh negative psychic energy generating machine but like you know that's that's for the 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 negative version of this. Yeah, and I'll just add one more thing about the the hadron colliders, the cyclotrons. I was reading into one, and in, in one of the uh, videos I created talked about one in Brookhaven, New York, which is um, in Long Island part of New York, and that I was reading into that cyclotron was specifically used for what what I would call timeline insertions. So you talked about the possibility of them being used for amnesia and that type of a thing. Also the possibility to take an event from one timeline and copy and paste it into the timeline that we're in now so that history actually changes. So if you go back and look at the historical record, things might be very different from you know, what you knew before. So, th and th those type of things could be some of the causes for what we call Mandela effects, especially the historical ones. And they're, they're nonstop. Like, I, I tell you, every time I look at history and I think I know history, things are not the way I remember at all. Like, just to mention one, just kind of random. This is like a, a Pearl Harbor World War II one. And we're coming up on Dece December 7th. So it's kind of something that's somewhat timely. But I didn't realize in my old timeline, the Japanese only bombed Pearl Harbor once. In the timeline that we're in now, they bombed Pearl Harbor again 90 days later. And it wasn't as, as successful as the first one, but I had never known about that before. And all these other things, like all these other changes, like nonstop things that are happening, timelines merging, could cyclotrons be responsible for some of them? It's all like a really fascinating subject. And every time like different places and the collective consciousnesses of like Japan, for instance, go through a big uh healing uh, resilience uh getting more wholeness uh you know bursts of evolution it'll affect their entire timeline uh in their all their capabilities including their ability to send um energy to influence back in time uh to make things better for themselves uh and chris did you go over like some of the other stuff like the instinct thing and the sacrifice thing that you read into the instinct and the sacrifice um refresh my memory with that i have some okay, you, uh, we were talking about this yesterday um uh you're like reading into like oh this kind of greater instinct that's within the sheep that's like you're you're reading into what's moving them in this fashion uh and it's like that force part of it uh the instinct is a root chakra animalistic uh, dna ancestry sense that can be intensified or grained like a knife kind of thing um we also read um their sacrifice energy would you know in magic circles that can be very powerful it doesn't have to be like death it can be like worship uh the origin the origin of the word worship which used to be you'd worship which you'd work for your god you would create you would like make monuments and all that um, and just like walking in a circle, like uh, how Ma Mecca uses that to get closer to God, their God, Allah, which I read that whole thing is a giant egregore, which is a giant collective consciousness for Allah connection and everything in that collective consciousness, half good, half negative, depending on, you know, with the moral differences that Islam has, like whatever you want to go into. 
it amplifies their God's presence and its influence through their, you know, lineages um, <laughs> and a lot of other stuff, as you, you both know. I uh, also read that it's act, this one is acting like a portal for uh, Izanami and Izanagi to have more like slow trickle themselves in presence there. Uh, so depending on how long the sheep circle, then it's like, it's, it's similar to us bringing more of our higher self into our body, them r manifesting themselves more into the physical 3D world. Uh, not, they may, you know, like when you look at how, how does this work? And like, are they not all here? Like, well, some of the gods stepped out um or they have like a anchored presence in a particular space that uh, recognizes that and venerates them and people worship them uh they may have like a whole city that they look after it depends on who, what god and all that but yeah not all the time a lot of them like to step out if especially if they're being attacked or they're meant to depending on you know the more uh, interference that they have and uh, other greater beings telling them they have to, uh, you know, stop, you know, stop interfering and take a little step back in the game as well. Uh, didn't you say you read a black hole technology, Chris? Yeah. It's funny because you're bringing that up and I was actually reading that into regarding something else that I was working on, but I didn't make that clear to you, but yeah, the black hole technology was something else that I was reading into. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so, okay. Like with that, um, like even if it was something different then okay, that makes sense. Um, so I I'm still though getting though it's a, an accumulation of energy and that is like a yin aspect of, uh, generation, uh, which is receptive or cumulative. And so it kind of acts like a black hole, but not really, but, uh it <laughs> this is accumulating energy um yeah so i continue with what you're saying i definitely i definitely think it's clear that there's some form of a portal that's being opened channeled you know um accessed it's anything circular is a form of 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 working with uh with and through a vortex of some sort um, that's just something that I think I've intuitively done as well, even with some of my own personal spiritual things that I've done, where I've done circular motions, where you're, you're int intuitively knowing that you're working with that portal energy. So I think whatever's coming through, whether it's positive or negative, it's it's definitely a message from higher consciousness on this earth. And so... I'd like to know what everyone else thinks that's watching today. So if you guys want to go ahead and drop it down in the comments, let us know what you guys think, because, yeah, this is really interesting. And um, we think there's going to be a lot more that's going to come forward when it comes to this. So we're excited to hear what all of you guys think. And also, if you guys can go ahead and subscribe to Sean's channel at Psionic League and um because he's got a lot of good content and stuff that he talks about is there anything on your channel that's hot topics that they should go and check out i mean it's whatever i, I just released sex talk so is that but i also got it on uh, my membership site i'm releasing all these video products on abilities so for people to download like the last one i just put up was block removal it has the link to that so releasing all the blocks on you and mostly the spirit um then going into uh mental blocks emotional blocks and soul blocks and physical blocks later and then everything going into the energy harvesting system and how to detach from it and get more energy for yourself but uh yeah uh how about you guys uh how do people reach you uh and i'm on uh, sciaclique.com sciaclique youtube and okay. you know Okay, thank you. Awesome. And also, Chris, go ahead and subscribe to Quantum Businessman as well. He's got a lot of really interesting and cool stuff that he talks about, usually around the Mandela effect. But have you kind of started to go in some other directions in terms of your topics? It looks like you might might have. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, Because the Mandela effect, you know, definitely catches a lot of people's imagination because it begins to give them raise questions about what our reality is. And is it possible we're literally just dreaming right now? Like, is this a dream? Is this a holographic reality? You know, you know, what's going on? So yeah, I've been expanding into other things too. Uh, did a lot of interviews with people as well. Um, created a couple of uh, videos based upon the light language that I speak. One was for a soul family homing beacon. And the other one was for a heart opening um, light language uh, meditation. So yes, yeah, so I'm expanding in, into that and getting all different areas, just all these things that I'm interested in and sharing them with other people. And um, I'll just mention too that I'm, I, I finally started doing this, but people have been asking me about doing sessions for a while. And I've always said, I, I don't really want to do that. But um, on my website, quantumbusinessman.com, there's a section now where if you want to, you can sign up for a um, um, a session with me. I'm only going to do a few a month, but that's if that's something you'd want me to do. Look into your Akashic Records, um, do some light language for you, talk about business type things, you know, all all, all these different things that could come up, uh, basically about healing and making, making you more whole. So That was something I actually did want to ask you about because quantum businessman, the universe is based on commerce. I would actually like to dive into your theory on that at some point. Um, because I'm sure that is pretty interesting. I feel like I've been starting to see into that more recently with how everything is flowing in terms of of wealth and finances, especially in the spiritual community and how we can tie that all in and make sense of all of it. Yeah, I'd be happy to share that with you. Like trade, an equal exchange of energy. And then when you start to explore more of, of the solar system and galaxy and is like the universe actually based on commerce and trade and productivity. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, cuz it does seem to be pointing that it is, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks guys for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this show and yeah, we'll be back for another one soon. So take care and have a beautiful everything. Thanks guys for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you guys.